Hello, fifth grade artists, and welcome back to your virtual art room. Uh, over the next couple weeks, last couple weeks of this second quarter, we will be working on our winter project. You will be completing a watercolor painting of the Northern Lights. For this project, you'll be utilizing all of the to tools and techniques that we've discussed over the last few lessons. So blending techniques, brush strokes, use of color. You'll be applying all of what you've learned over this quarter into this project. It is challenging. I recommend that you watch the video completely through before you watch it again as you work. Uh, and just make sure you have all your materials set up, ready to go, so you can put your best work forward. I can't wait to see what you guys create. Let's get started. The first thing that you want to do is to tape down all four edges of your paper onto your workspace. Not only will this anchor your paper as you work to keep it from sliding around, but you will also be able to uh, create a nice white border for yourself around your painting. Once you have done that, you want to lightly sketch your hillsides. You can also mark where you might want trees to be uh, coming off your hillside, but we will be painting over those later. Um, make sure your pencil lines are very, very light. Use a larger one inch flat brush to water wash your page. Um, I probably should have continued using the water, the same brush I used for the water wash to paint. Um, so feel free to do your first layer with that one inch brush if you have one as well. If you don't have a paint set, you will need to pre-mix some of your colors. You can get some nice blues and purples um, all set. You can create a variation of different tertiary colors. To, um, for, to work for your sky. You'll also need some green. Um, I would go on the more of a yellow green, uh, so a very light green with a lot more yellow in it um, for our northern lights as well. Uh, black is also a helpful color to have, so if you have a paint set, you should already have black that you can water down to make into more of a gray. Um, but if you don't have a black, you can mix a dark brown using your pigment paints. You will want to wet wash just the sky portion of your painting area. So we're gonna leave our hillside or our mountainside um, dry for the time being. And uh, start by adding a deep blue to the sides and blending inward. Um, we're gonna leave a little space in the middle for that green area of the northern lights as we go. So once you fill in blues and purples in the edges and the corners leading down to the hillside, you're going to add that bright green into the middle. Um, as you work, you'll notice that if you continue to lay over the paint, it will actually end up picking up some of the paint. So if you're going to add layers of paint, make sure that you're letting your paper dry in between. As you add green to the center of your page, use long sweeping brush strokes. We want to have a nice curved area for the northern lights as they're coming out of the back of the hillside and then kind of getting a little bit wider as they reach towards the top of the page. If at any time you need to lift color, you can use a towel or a paper towel um, and then fill that color back in. As your paper dries, you can continue to add more and more layers. This technique is called glazing when it comes to watercolor. Um, the trick is you have to make sure that your paper is completely dry. So if you need to step away from your picture at any time, please do so. And then you can come back and make that, the colors darker by adding another layer on top of them. You can add additional colors to the area, the green area of your northern lights to add some more definition, some streaks of blue or darker green. We're going to let our sky dry and work a little bit on our mountainside. So we're actually going to be using a wet on dry technique. So we're not going to water wash our mountain. Um, we're going to go in with a dry brush. So not wetting our brush, going right to paint and adding um, some of that grayish brown, very light, very watered down, uh, grayish brown in just sparing areas um, to add some definition to the hillside to create some hills in the foreground and some shadows in the background. When you use, if you have a smaller brush to use for this part, that's helpful. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll go back over with just water on our brush and add a little bit of blending right on the paper. We're gonna go back to the edge of the hillside and kind of clean up some of the lines we made as where we were working with the sky um, and just redefine some peaks 
and valleys of our hill. Um, you can use a dark blue or dark purple in this area and then just use some water on your brush to clean up and blend um, the, the top of the hills to make it uh, nice and soft instead of a sharp edge. We'll add a little bit of blue to your mountain side as well, just to kind of give that reflective quality of the blue sky reflecting off of a snowy hillside. Use some water on your brush to continue to blend as needed uh, and soften any brush strokes you make on the hillside. You can go back over with some darker layers as well on top of the, the lighter shades um, to continue to add value and uh, definition to the hillside there. Once your sky is dry, you can use uh, just a, a wet flat brush, use just water, and we're going to create just a nice blend. Uh, so we'll re-water wash the sky, which will really help bring some of those, blend, the, blend together some of the streaky lines that uh, you see I created by using a smaller brush. So again, you might wanna use a larger brush for uh, the sky portion. And then you can also continue to use that larger brush to blend uh, using just water into the hillside to kind of bring soften all those lines and bring it all together. Using a small brush, you're going to want to use a very deep, either dark, dark brown or a black, if you have it, um, to design your trees. And uh, there's gonna be a series of trees you really wanna keep in mind what your foreground is going to look like, what your background is going to look like. You might even have some trees peeking over the top of the hillside all the way in the background. Um, so start with a tree that, you know, will kind of be like the focal point where your eye will be drawn to. Um, and this might be sitting on top of a hill like mine is here. Uh, and then you're going to use a stippling technique once you have the trunk drawn out, so the line of the trunk, and then you'll use like a dotting or stippling technique to add branches and add some definition to the trees. Obviously trees that will be closer to you will have more definition. Trees that are a little bit farther from you will be more of a shape and have less definition. So th think in mind too, what hills are closer, what hills are farther away as you add your trees. And they don't have to be the same tree lines that you created to with your sketch initially. You can, continue, you can add more or less. Um, we just wanna give the illusion of a forest in the background. Try adding different types of trees too, to kind of add some character to your project. Um, I added some looser type branches that were um, more of like an oak tree format than a pine tree. Once you've finished up with your trees, you can add a little bit more shading uh, to create some shadows on the underside of where the trees would be standing on the hillside, uh, as well as on where the, the top of the hill meets our horizon line um, and make some shadows along where the trees are. Lastly, you're going to add that dark black and make just some last details to add definition and more specific, bring out different, uh, different specific hillsides in the foreground. Um, just that little bit of that dark color on the lighter colors really makes things pop. And as always, to soften any lines, you can always go back over with just a wet brush uh, to blend any of those real dark shades that maybe just stand out a little too much. You can blend those back into your surfaces with just a little bit of water. When you're finished working, you can remove the tape from the edges of your paper, reveal that nice smooth line across the bottom. Uh, don't forget to take a picture and upload your piece to our online student gallery to share with all your buddies.